Welcome to the second series of travel photography with Wex Photo Video. I'm Matt Parry and I'm a travel photographer. And this time we're in India. We'll be exploring the hustle and bustle of Delhi, India's capital city, before we make our way to Agra, home of the iconic Taj Mahal. Our final destination is an overnight train journey away in the holy city of Varanasi, which sits on the river Ganges. I'll be talking you through my approach, as well as some of the techniques and challenges that you may face as a travel photographer. We've got a few exciting things lined up for our time in India, but we've got some free time this morning and we're just going to have an explore to acclimatise ourselves. At the moment we're wandering through um, the streets of New Delhi, so we're just taking a, a look around and seeing what we can find. Um, it's just gone a bit peaceful at the moment, but further down where we've just been walking, it's crazy. Lots of people all going about their life. Lots of shops selling bits and bobs. Um, people keen to have their pictures taken. Lots of people just wandering around. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So it's actually really nice. And away from the kind of the main bits as well, there's very little hassle. You want a photo? You want a photo? So you can wander around quite freely and take plenty of pictures. It's really nice exploring these back alleys. You're away from the heat of the sun. You're away from the hustle and bustle of the main streets. And you see a true glimpse of life here. Danish. Danish? Oh. oh. And you live here? Huh? You live here? Yes. Oh, well, nice to meet you. And from a photographic point of view, you know, capturing real life is one of the greatest things about travel photography. Nothing staged, nothing forced, just real people. Picture? OK. You may have noticed I'm not using my Canon 5D Mark III in this series, and that's because Wex gave me the opportunity to build my kit from scratch. So now I'm using the latest model from Sony, the A7 III, and on paper this seems the perfect camera for travel photography. We've had a really nice morning wandering through the back streets of New Delhi, but now it's time to jump in an auto rickshaw. We're going to head now to Connaught Place in New Delhi, where we're going to meet a local photographer called Sundeep Bali and we're going to have a look at some of his favourite places to shoot. And even when you're in the auto rickshaws getting from A to B, there are still photo opportunities. And just look how happy our driver is for that. <laughs> it's a fly out. <laughs> Sundeep is a commercial and fashion photographer. He's also a Zyson Pro Photo ambassador. So it's going to be great to meet him and find out about his experience shooting here. OK, I'm just going to order an Uber Yeah, now. perfect, yeah. yeah. And yes, you heard that right, even Uber's made its way to Delhi. We're on our way to Nizamuddin Dargo, which is a mausoleum to a Sufi saint. Before we get there though, Sundeep wanted to take us to Ugarasan Ki Bauli, which is a historical stepwell. So there are stepwells all over India, but this is a fascinating piece of architecture, and it was designed to cope with seasonal fluctuations in water demand. Even though the light is a bit harsh for the photographs at this time of day, it's still a very, very interesting structure to look around. As we follow the flow of people through this lively market on the way to the mausoleum, we were constantly getting stopped by kids and adults actually wanting their picture taken. Thank you, thank you. Lovely family. And this is something I think we're going to see a lot of in our time in India. It's actually quite refreshing when people want their picture taken as opposed to me having to ask. Yeah, cool. Oh, Matt, nice yeah. to meet you. And selfies are very, very popular at the moment, so it wasn't just me taking the pictures, people were very keen to have me in them for some reason. So we've just bought some flowers, this is quite um, a religious area that we're going into. So what we're going to do, we've bought some flowers for, for an offering, so we've just taken our shoes off and we're just going to have a wander into there um, and, and leave some of these behind. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't go any further into the mausoleum with our cameras, but it was still, as the only Westerns around, it was a fantastic experience just to see these devout pilgrims come and pay their respects. Leaving the mausoleum, we wandered further into the Nizamuddin West area of the city. So we've just wandered out, and there's a big pool just to our uh, side here that we're just going to try and have a look at. There's kids jumping in, doing some acrobatics, so we'll see if we can get some pictures of them doing that now. I wanted to ask Sundeep if this is one of his regular shooting spots. I've been here so many times, but it's always good to be back. Yeah. I have think... you swam in there? Uh, no, no, <laughs> I haven't. I have just shot it from a distance. Okay. Yeah. I have been, you know, I've got splashes on my camera all the yeah. time. 
but uh, I haven't dived in. But I think when you come here in summers, you really feel that uh, you know this place is not only relaxed. You know the temperatures are yeah, comparatively down. You feel cool here. Yeah, and that's why people come here. You know, for it's these boys, nice. it's a daily ritual. Not only was it a welcome break from the intense heat of the sun, but it was also great to see the kids just having fun. For our last stop of the day, Sunday wanted to take us somewhere away from the hustle and bustle. So we've just arrived at Amun's tomb, um, which is just here. It's beautiful and we're just catching the last of the light now of the evening. So I'm just trying to expose for the highlights here really, um, because the beauty of a camera like this is that you can actually boost the shadows quite a lot and still retain a lot of information without um, incurring a lot of noise. And so for, for people like myself coming to this city, I guess it can be quite overwhelming as a destination, lots of people, crazy streets. I guess so, I guess so. Um, so how, what, what do you sort of recommend for people when they come here from a photographic point of view? I saw, I, I rather observed that you are a people's person, you like uh being surrounded by people, you like interacting with them. Uh, and I think that's, that's for me the essence of it in India or in Delhi. Uh, if you like interacting with people, you may not know the language, uh, but you know, they understand gestures. Yes, of there's course. A, you know, there's a fair amount of symbolism. The common here. language of yeah. the gesture, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And if you can, in that sense, visually interact with people, I think India is a great place to shoot in. People are visually aware. They want, a lot of them want to get pictures. Some of them don't. Yeah. But mostly you will be, meet, meet people who are open to getting photographed. Yeah. It's early morning now on day two, um, and we're just off to Old Delhi. We're actually going to the Jama Masjid, which is one of the largest uh, mosques in all of India. Um, so we're just going to find a tuk tuk to take us there. Early morning's a wonderful time to get out and explore, especially places like this. You know, the streets can be really, really chaotic and busy. Um, this is a city of 18 million people. It's calm, it's tranquil. And somewhere like this now, you can just see people chilling out, relaxing. There's no hassle, there's just people relaxing and, and praying. There's a few people bathing on the other side of the pool, so I was just taking uh, a picture of them. So a few of them saw me doing it and just waving to the camera, which is quite nice to see. No one seemed to take any offence really by it. So. I'm just changing to a 1635 f2.8, um, just to try and give me something with the reflection in. And there's a reflecting pool just in front of us. So I'm going to see if that works. It's a G Master lens, so hopefully this should be nice and impressive for what we're trying to, to do here. As with anything, when you're putting it on 16mm, which is kind of the ultra wide end of it, is you're going to get convergence, especially when you've got the, the vertical lines of the minarets here. So, I mean, that's something that if you can go wide enough, you might be able to correct in post. But unfortunately, we don't have enough space to kind of do some of that correction. But I've got some reflection in front of it, so it's still quite a nice image. Now it's not even nine o'clock in the morning yet and already we've got some shots in the bag from our time at Jam Masjid. Next we're gonna meet with Kursheed Ali who is a guide for street connections and they run walking tours of Old Delhi. Walking tours are a great way to explore a city because they often give you access to places that you would never normally find on your own. We're inside the temple at the moment so I've just put the camera on to silent shooting um, just so it isn't distracting everyone um, that's actually worshipping inside. Having a local guide with you will also help the interactions that you have with the people that you meet. It helps you build a better understanding of what they're doing and what is going on. Even if it's just sharing breakfast with some of the locals that we met. One of the things to look for when you're walking through the streets are interesting characters, you know, people with interesting faces. We met a 77 year old woman called Saraswati in front of her house in Old Delhi. Now, her colourful clothes and a nice smile really helped the images pop. Thank you. 
Then you bet. Next, Kershey took us to a textile factory, and again, without him being with us, this is the sort of place where you wouldn't have felt comfortable walking in and imposing yourself on people in the middle of their jobs. Yet it gave us a great opportunity to capture people as they were going about their lives. One of the good things about the Street Connections tour is its affiliation with the Salem Ballot Trust. Now this is a leading charity that helps street children in and around Delhi. In fact, Kershid is actually a former street child himself, so he took us to his former shelter home and we sat down with him to find out a bit more. Before here, I lived on the street right. for more than two years. So that was totally different life and like before Salam Bar Trust I didn't aware that I will get this where I am standing right now I will be here but when I came in Salam Bar Trust I got many exposures mm. like opportunities yeah opportuni yeah. opportunities and so like I, I would like to say that Salam Bar changed my life yeah it sounds like it now I have totally different life and so now I have dreamed like what I want to do for my life and yeah, two years ago I started working with the street children so I want to make them understand the uh, value of their life for them mm. because if mainly they are like misguided yes so they should be guided and Mainly, I would like to engage them with arts. For street children, art is the best therapy. As well as being a guide, Kershid is also a budding videographer and he was keen to show us some of his work. And we've just jumped in an Uber and we're off to meet Sundeep again and we're going to explore a bit more of South Delhi. We're here at the Qatar Minar complex, which is in the south of Delhi. Um, this is one of the most popular attractions in all of Delhi. It's actually the tallest brick minaret in the world. Um, we're here in the last of the evening light, so it's catching beautifully on the, uh, the minaret itself. So we're having a walk around the complex. We've actually come to the edge um, just so we can do a little bit of filming because they're quite particular about bringing things like tripods um, and video cameras into the complex. Um, so we're going to go and have an explore and see what we can see. This is one of Sundeep's favourite places to shoot in the city and it's actually really nice being with another photographer and seeing how they work, seeing how they think and seeing some of the shots that they have in mind. arrived at India Gate, it's sunset or the sun is just set behind us. Um, you can see just how busy it is. We're actually going to try and set up our tripod somewhere if we can find a bit of space and um, see if we can do some long exposures. So we might wait for it to get a little bit darker first. So I've just been shooting some handheld shots, um, pushing it up to about ISO 2000 and just looking at the back of the screen, I have to say, hugely impressed. It is crystal clear, pin sharp, can't see any noise in it whatsoever. The top of it is obviously light anyway, which is probably helping uh, the cleanliness of it, but 4,000 now, I've just been shooting handheld, and it is really, it's tap sharp, no noise whatsoever, so it really is great. Unfortunately, most places in India, or certainly the monuments that we've been visiting, they tend to open at sunrise, shut at sunset, so anyone looking for those blue hour type shots, it's actually quite difficult. So we've come here to India Gate to have a go because it's somewhere where we can actually hopefully set up the tripod, not get in too many people's way. Um, it's all lit up beautifully with the colours of the Indian flag, so we're going to have a go at shooting this now. And this has actually got a really nice function um, in that you can set it so that when you twist to manually focus, it actually zooms right in, or your, your frame shot are actually in focus as well. So there's some really nice touches that you get with mirrorless cameras such as this. 
It's been a nice but unfortunately rare opportunity to get the tripod out and get some long exposure pictures and it's been a great way to end our time in Delhi. With a face like mine, it's not hard to see why I spend most of my time behind the camera. Yet for some of the people, they were more interested in taking pictures of me than the India Gate. 